evening. Wow, that was sad. Can we do that again? Good evening. Well, there's not a lot of us in here, but it could be better than what it was. Um, given how small we are tonight, I'm going to lead the entire worship from right here. Um, it's going to be a, a intimate worship service tonight. Uh, we're continuing ironies of the passion, taking a look at an irony tonight when it comes to a sense of timing. And seeing things are uh, interesting when it comes to that. Our first hymn talks about God's timing. We're going to sing hymn 122, verses 1, 2, and 3. So 122, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's worship the Lord. We continue with the Lent readings. Tonight, we're going to hear about the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you've come out with swords and clubs? Each day I was with you in the temple courts, and you didn't lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led Jesus away and took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. We'll pick up there next week. The portion of God's word we're going to concentrate on tonight comes from Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. This is God's word. This Lent, you get to witness Jesus receiving your judgment. That's grace. You get to see mercy played out in the biggest way ever. And because of that, you have peace with God. Amen. Timing is everything. Take a look at the movies. Luke Skywalker is zooming down that Death Star trench, and he knows he needs to hit that exhaust port just right. He waits, he waits, he waits. He fires the proton torpedoes. He blasts off, and he missed. That would really change the ending of the movie, wouldn't it? Timing is everything. Think about romance. Man falls in love. He gets down on one knee. He proposes to his girlfriend, except they've only been dating for four days. His timing is a little bit off. On the other hand, if his timing goes the other way, and he waited too long to propose, maybe he lost the girl. Timing is everything. Imagine the quarterback takes the snap, comes back for the pass, and he passes it too early. Incomplete. Passes it too late. Interception. Timing is everything. 
night, we see two groups that for them, timing was everything. Except their timings didn't match up. And we're going to see some irony in that. It is Tuesday of Holy Week. Sometimes we call it Teaching Tuesday. Jesus has spent all day teaching, but not just teaching. The Pharisees, the chief priests, all of the big religious muckamucks are there, and they're testing him. They're prodding him. They're trying to get him to slip up so that they have some excuse to try and drag him away. Except, wouldn't you know it? Jesus passes with flying colors and in the process embarrasses them. And so all of the chief priests and the Pharisees, they gather together. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest. And they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. They'd been trying to kill him for a while. I mean, this is nothing new. They'd been trying to kill him for at least a year. According to the book of John, they had been against him for actually close to three years already. But after today, they finally decided, you know what, this is it. He is going to die. But timing is everything. Not during the Passover, when, you know, Jerusalem is filled with all his followers. No, we try and take him out then. That is it. We are dead. There's going to be a riot. So we're going to have to wait till after the Passover. We're going to do it secretly so no one knows it's us. So we can't get into trouble. We're going to kill him. But timing is everything. It cannot be during Passover. And then at that exact same time, while they're speaking, Jesus says this. Jesus said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. For Jesus, timing was everything. He said, I'm going to die, but it's going to be on Passover. So you got these two groups of people. You got the chief priest saying, he's going to die, but not on Passover. And you got Jesus saying, I'm going to die on Passover. <laughs> kind of ridiculous that you got these two different timings working out. But Jesus has some very specific reasons for saying, I need to die on Passover. See, people have been trying to kill him basically since he was born. You got King Herod who wants to wipe out this king. Jesus and his parents have to flee to Egypt. It wasn't time for Jesus to die yet. Jesus went to his hometown of Nazareth. And as he preached, the people tried to murder him and throw him off a cliff. But it wasn't his time yet. He walked right through the crowd. But now it's his time. See, Passover, 1,500 years. 1,500 years, the people have been taught this lesson every year. For me to survive, an innocent lamb must die in my place. There's a reason Jesus was called the Lamb of God. Timing's everything. You see, there was an ancient tradition that everyone had to slay the lamb at dusk. And when that time came, there would be huge ram's horn blast from the temple. And at that moment, all the lambs would be slaughtered all across Jerusalem. Well, according to the timing of the Bible, that is exactly when Jesus cried out, It is finished. Right at that moment. Jesus knew this was his time to die. And he did it at just the right time. Timing is everything. And not only is timing everything, but, you know, the Pharisees, they want Jesus. We're going to take him out of the way quietly. He'll just disappear. And Jesus says, uh-uh, nothing doing. I'm going to be crucified. See, the Romans, they knew what they were doing. Not only was crucifixion inc incredibly brutal and painful, but it was also incredibly public. If you walked into Jerusalem in those days, you passed by crosses. You could not get into Jerusalem unless you walked past these dead men and dying men hanging from crosses. Jesus said, I'm going to die there. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, it talks about how cursed is the man who is hung on a tree. And a cross is often called a tree because it's made out of wood. Jesus was hung on a tree. He was cursed. 
is. It's also written in the Old Testament, cursed is anyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. That's us. We're under a curse. But Jesus became that curse for us. He took all that weight away. And for him, it was all about the timing. It had to be on Passover. And wouldn't you know what? Jesus' timing is perfect, and that's what happens. Hopefully that's not a surprise to you. I mean, I'm going to ask a question, and I actually do want a response. It can be a nod, it can be a thumbs up, it can be a yes, or a no, or a shaking of the head. But I do want a response. Do you think Jesus has good timing? Okay, we got some slight nods, we got a thumbs up. Okay. Jesus' good timing. The Bible says that. When the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of woman. Our first hymn was all about that. When 30 years were accomplished, then Jesus started his ministry. His timing was perfect. Now a harder question. Is Jesus' timing still good? Now think about your life. We all have things where we say, this is my timing. I'm going to be out of the hospital by this day. I'm going to be done with this problem by this day. I'm going to go on vacation on this day. We all have things that we, that timing is everything to us. I'm going to go out on this date, on this day. And you time that out just right. Except it doesn't always work that way. There's an old song, it's not from the Bible, but it sure seems to speak truth, at least as far as this lyric goes. Um, when, when you make plans, God laughs. The, the lyric is, life is what happens when we're busy making other plans. God doesn't always listen to our timing. And when that happens, I don't know about you, but I get upset. I get frustrated. I get angry. I'm just like those Pharisees. My timing is better than God's. Except, it's not. <laughs> and it's hard to get that through our heads. When God doesn't follow your timing, the answer is not to beat yourself up as if you're dumb. It is perfectly fine for you and appropriate for you to make plans and say, if God wills it. It is perfectly appropriate for you to take a look and be a good steward of your times and, and say, this would be the best way that I think it will work. That's fine. But don't beat yourself up. And don't beat up God. Don't fall into despair. But go back and look at the cross again. When your timing doesn't work out, go back and look at that cross and remember Jesus' perfect timing. He had perfect timing for knowing when to go to the cross. He had perfect timing for knowing when to be born. He had perfect timing for knowing when to come back from death. And that same Jesus now rules the entire world. His timing hasn't changed. Go back there and review and remember. It, it's all about timing. And Jesus does have good timing. Sometimes that's hard. Like I said, go back. Go back to the cross. Amen. Good to worship with you. Um, thank you for allowing me to come down here. During Lent, I'm usually up in the pulpit, and it's, it's kind of nice to get out of there. Um, we'll see you next week.